first question is, why are you running? That's a very good question. Um, I think first and foremost is because we have a passion for the mandate of the society. Um, we believe that the AMS is an integral part of the student experience. Um, it has something for everyone. Um, with that said, it's not the be all and end all of the Queen's experience. We understand that there are some students that may not get involved, but the AMS should do everything it can to to present the resources and opportunities to students um, because extracurricular opportunities at Queen's University are just as important as the academic side um, and we believe students should have as accessible access to that as possible. Um, so in, in terms of our passion for the society and the mandate, um, additionally we also have a lot of experience and we believe that we have what it takes to stand up for students on the university governing bodies such as University Council, University Senate and Board of Trustees. Um, there are a lot of challenges that Queen's University will be facing this year and next year and in the coming years and we believe that the need for a passionate and experienced executive has never been greater. Um, with that said, we believe we are the, that needed passionate and experienced executive, um, so that's why we're running. Uh, what are your main motivators or motivating factors for running this year? Is that different than... Should we do that individually even? Or is that, that's is that kind of the same thing? Yeah. Is that different? Okay. I guess like, well, let's do it individually because we did the first one together. Yeah. The team kind of, okay, so I, I guess like, <laughs> um, to kind of touch on like my past experience with the AMS, um, I, was, I worked at Common Ground for the past three years here and I was the head manager last year and I kind of had one of my best experiences at this university in that time um, and was able to manage 125 staff and, and five assistant managers as well, which is kind of, I, I know I keep saying this over and over again in debates, but it's the thing that I, I really did learn the most from in, in any experience at this university, um, even above my classes, I'd say. Uh, so I think I really gained my passion for the society through that experience um, and really can see what good it can do for the student body as well and what resources are available. And I just wanted to be able to, to continue that and, and to continue to provide that um, to other students as well. And, and given that I had such an amazing experience as a manager, I would really hope that somebody else could as well. Um, but I do also recognize, I know we all recognize that that's not really the be all and end all for everyone. And, and full-time AMS jobs are great, um, but I don't think they're for everybody at this university. And there's a lot of other things that we can offer as well. And it's important to recognize that um, whatever a student wants in the society uh, is enough. And, and it doesn't need to be pushed onto people um, in the way that I think it has been in the past. So I think that's kind of an answer for me specifically, but. I think I share a lot of the same reasons as Tristan. I am um, the Academic Affairs Commissioner this year for the AMS and I've had such an amazing experience. Um, and I do think that in that capacity, sort of gaining a perspective on how the university works and how what it actually means to advocate on behalf of students. Um, I do a lot of work with the administration, consulting with students, what are your academic concerns, things like the GPA system, so SOLACE, um, Senate issues, and then taking that to the administration and saying these are students' concerns and this is how you can address them um, to be effective. And I think that in addition to that, I also am interestingly motivated to run because for a while I was involved in a lot of things outside of the AMS and um, I think that I would be able to bring that perspective of not feeling part of the AMS and I remember that feeling very well and I think that it's important to have someone, um, I think that I do bring that to the team as well in the sense that I sort of have both perspectives working for the AMS and also sort of being afraid of coming into the lobby to pick up an application so I would look forward to bringing both of those sides to the position. Um, in terms of what motivates me I think it's the opportunity for myself and this executive and even other members of the AMS and Council um, to work further with the administration, um, different senators, different trustees, um, and, and more specifically, the most interesting part I find it, are, are the things that students don't know are happening but have a very heavy influence on their undergraduate experience. Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, earlier this week, I was criticized for not doing anything at the University Senate, and, and I find that very interesting because the beauty of it is nobody really hears about it. Um, but I, I helped champion a motion at the University Senate this year that basically said the switch to GPA has, has disadvantaged a lot of students. It kicked a lot of students on their, off of their Dean's Honours list. Mm -hmm. It even prevented some students from trying to graduate or, or from being able to graduate. So one of the things I did with a couple other Senators, um, faculty members, uh, even Deans, was draft a motion that said that each of these faculties and schools has to go back, reassess how they implement the GPA system so that it doesn't disadvantage any single student. Um, and when I found out that, that someone had criticized me for not doing anything on Senate, this, this motion could change one person's life. It could help them graduate. It could help them get on the Dean's Honours List. And they may not know the influence that it has on them now, but in five or ten years they will. Um, I think the beauty of the AMS is a lot of it happens behind closed doors, um, but it has a heavy influence on the undergraduate population. Um, and I'm very passionate about that and I wanted to continue working with that.
I think, sorry, I just thought of something that I wanted to add as well that, to mine, and I think that's something we all kind of share is that um, the AMS is really, it's here for learning. And we're at this university that is a place, an institution of learning. And that's what they, why the Alma Mater Society exists as well. Um, and I think something we all kind of share is that we really do understand that as much as you can come into these jobs extremely prepared, you're also going to be learning the entire time. And that's why they are here. And if we didn't challenge ourselves, um, then we really wouldn't learn at all as well. Um, and in that sense, it, it, it's very important to take these jobs and have fun with them. And, and it would be silly to, to take yourself so serious. And it's very important. These are, it's really, really good work that we do, um, but it's important to have some fun with it as well uh, and ensure that you are learning and benefiting um, for yourself as well as for the student body in the end. Great. Yeah. Uh, what is the largest misconception about your team? Hmm. Hmm. I thought it was really interesting last night at the presidential debate when um, I think the candidates or the teams were asked what is the great, uh, greatest weakness mm -hmm. of another team. and. Um, one of the teams said that our professionalism was a weakness because it made us unapproachable and um, or, or would make students feel like they couldn't approach us, um, which is really interesting because uh, if anyone has been part of our campaign or has seen us at the booth, we are constantly laughing and, I mean, running between class talks and really? bumping into each other. <laughs> um, we are. I'm always laughing. Um, and then, you know, you, come on. Um, no, we're, we're kidding, really, like, laughing. we're funny, we're funny, we have fun, and um, we, we have so much fun. Sorry, I just said that three times. Um, we're funny, we're fun, really we're fun. Enjoy. Okay, we really, <laughs> blooper reel. Um, we're well, back. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting uh, when we were criticized for being too professional and that, that would somehow impede us from engaging with students because we've been engaging with students in our current, in our current and past involvement, involvements with the AMS and throughout this campaign. And I think that the best part, um, a really strong quality that we do bring is that we are very professional, which I think is a strength because um, it really enables us and has enabled us in our past positions and our current positions to really do effective advocacy and, and work on behalf of students. But we're also just a bunch of goofballs sometimes, and we really know we have we really enjoy speaking with students. So yeah. um, I was really surprised by that criticism. I think like to add what, to what Mir said as well. Like these jobs are they're big jobs. You're running a sixteen million dollar yeah. corporation, and there's a time that you do have to be very professional. Mm -hmm. and it's extremely important, especially in things like an HR situation. You have to be the most professional that you possibly can be. When working with the administration, it's the exact same thing. Um, but on that note, um, there's a time to to have fun, and we're all. I mean, I'm. 21 years old. I don't know how old these guys are. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, we're all around 20 years old. There's no reason why we're not like any other student at this university. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you don't raise yourself on a pillar because you work for the AMS, I don't think, mm -hmm. and shouldn't do that. Um, because we're all taking classes here as well. And we're all having fun at Queens and, and having the, the time of our lives at this university too. So, yeah. Great. Uh, why will you work well as a team should you be elected? Um, I think first and foremost, and I mentioned this last night, is we're not afraid to criticize each other. Mm -hmm. um, when we first sat down together, I think we had our first disagreement <laughs> within the first meeting. Um, <laughs> but because we're so Multiple. open and honest with each other, um, we build off each other. We, yeah. we recognize um, each other's weaknesses, and where one person has a weakness, some other person makes up with it in a strength. Mm -hmm. um, we're not afraid to criticize each other. We're not afraid to tell them we think that you're wrong or disagree with each other. Um, mm -hmm. As long as we follow that up with an explanation and why I believe this mm -hmm. is right. It's one thing to say, no, you're wrong, and it's another thing to sit down with someone and have a discussion as to why you believe they're wrong, and this, I know this, 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 and this, and this, like, these are A, B, C, and D of why I think you're wrong, and the information I know that you may not know as to how we can work together to fix it. We're not afraid to criticize each other. We often disagree with each other, but I think it's part of the growing experience as a team. And two months ago, I guess we got together, and we've never been stronger, I would say. Yeah, I think, like, about working together, this campaign period itself, and I know this has been touched on in debates as well, is it's the busiest you can possibly be. I mean, like you're going from, I mean, like we'll meet at like 7 a.m. Um, and go till uh, like Two. past midnight for sure. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you're kind of spending all your time together already. Um, so you definitely have to be able to work together from this point. Um, and if we couldn't, I don't think we'd be able to do this campaign as well as we have, I think, um, mm -hmm. which is something that's very important too. I would add to that is, as I mentioned, we're not afraid to criticize and disagree with each other, but we're also not afraid to challenge each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we challenge ourselves individually, and we challenge each other individually, and we challenge ourselves as a team. Um, as I mentioned last night in my opening statements, we sit down at the end of the night, we look over what we did, what we accomplished during the day, but mo most importantly, what more we can accomplish the next day. If we did 15 class talks on Monday, we're doing 16 or 17 on Tuesday, and we sit down as a collective goal, we're saying we're doing 16 or 17, and here are the ones we're going to get done. 
Um, if, we, if we've spoken to 50 students one day, we're going to speak to 60 and we're going to find the time to do that. Um, we're not afraid to challenge each other and I think it's part of the growing process and it's working well. Great. What's the most in misunderstood aspect of your platform? Hmm. Hmm. I think, so yeah, I think one thing I want to touch on um, is something that's had a lot of discussion recently is the Physical Education Center and reopening mm -hmm. that building. Yes. Um, this is something that's a, a, a big part of our platform for sure. And one thing that we really want to make clear is that this is a long-term goal. Um, this is something that we, we see as a solution um, to not creating phases two and three of the Queen Center. Um, so I mean, as, as many people know, phases two and three will no longer be completed. Um, and those buildings were supposed to be funded by the student body. Um, so as the AMS uh, contributed $10.6 million um, out of the $25 million that we were supposed to, we now have phase one of the Queen Center, but not a completed uh, structure and student life center, we really think. So what we're envisioning is um, our student life center for the future. Uh, and one thing that's really important about this point is that we aren't afraid to challenge um, the limits in this sense. And, and we're not going to constrain ourselves to just our one year's executive. In this $16 million corporation, um, you can't only plan for one year. And I think if you're planning goals only for the one year, um, you're not really, obviously you're not looking ahead to the future at all. Um, and that wouldn't really be a sustainable plan for this corporation um, and student government for the future as well. Uh, so we're talking about this, to, this Envision Student Life Center of the future that includes the JDUC, uh, Queen Center and Physical Education Center. Um, and it's something we really, we really feel that um, the administration owes the student body for this. And, and it was a failure on their part to not complete our Queen Center, um, which is a project that was going to be funded by students. and and. Therefore, especially because it was supposed to be funded by the student body, it should have been completed. Um, so we're looking at this project as a long-term goal. We've spoken with um, Ann Brown, um, who is the Vice Principal of Facilities, as well as Ivan McKean, who is the Business Manager of Physical Plant Services, and they've both said that there's no reason why this isn't possible. Um, another thing we've spoken with a lot of uh, different parties about uh, it, is kind of interest in this project. So we presented first to um, Athletics and Recreation, mm -hmm. um, and they're very interested in this. I know one problem for athletics right now is that there are only um, two gymnasiums in the Queen Center, whereas there are three uh, in the PEC before. Um, this is something they really need access to again, given that, for example, right now, um, there are intramurals running at 12.30 a.m., which is pretty ridiculous. I know I have a lot of friends in those as well who are all like, <laughs> what are we doing? This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I know that athletics is, is very much so on board for this project and something they've already been speaking with Ann Brown about and are very interested in continuing. They'd love to support us in this initiative as well. Mm -hmm. um, the second party we spoke with was the registrar. I think something that all of us can agree upon this past year um, is that the registrar could really use this space for exam period. I know, um, I'm sure somebody's had a class, uh, somebody watching this interview has had a class um, in which it was divided into like 50 different rooms across campus for exam mm -hmm. period. If you have a 500 person lecture, um, and, and we don't have a gym to use for, many, for exams anymore, you're going to be divided into many different classrooms, which obviously isn't efficient um, for professors or for students writing the exams. Also, it costs a lot of money to, to hire proctors for all of those rooms as well. So the registrar really does want this to happen, um, and, and I think they want it really sooner rather than later as well. Um, so this is something we know that we would want to partner with them as well on. Um, the last party, we've spoken with Mike Condra, uh, Dr. Mike mm -hmm. Condra, who's the director of HCDS, um, and Every conversation we've had, we've had with him, um, he said that the biggest problem for health counseling and disability services um, is not that they don't have enough resources or enough staff, um, enough counselors, it's that they don't have enough space. Um, and he said this many times in, in the many times we've talked to him, that uh, HCDS um, with more space on campus could provide 500 more hours of counseling service. Um, because there are uh, counselors available already, um, they just really need the space to be, to be provided. And then they'd be able to provide their services across campus as well. So right now there is space in LaSalle, obviously, um, in Goods, the JDUC, um, and Victoria Hall. Mm -hmm. um, and we're proposing for the long term to have more space in the Physical Education Center, but do feel it's very important to address the short term as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this idea with the Physical Education Center that we've come up with um, is that we want to be able to bring together these parties and the student body who are very interested in this project um, and present it and create it as a priority for the administration. I know I don't have the exact quote with me right now, but um, I quoted in the debate last night um, something from the provost that was in the journal the other day um, saying that, uh, I believe to, to paraphrase kind of, he said that there's not enough um, money at the moment uh, to build phase in two and three of the Queen Center, but the administration is still very committed to a student life center of the future and wants to provide that to the student body. This is something we feel that um, the PEC is obviously a far more viable option than building uh, two new buildings, and we should be able to, uh, to include within that space, space for athletics,
space for clubs as well, because there's much of that um, for health counseling and disability services. So this is really something for everybody. Um, and I mean, ideally in the future as well, you could even connect this building to the JDEC um, via the alley that, that sits in the middle of the JDEC here. And that actually does connect these two buildings and could act even as, I mean, I know in the plans for the Queen Center, they talked about this crossroads. Um, and that would kind of be your crossroads between our student life center. Um, so that's kind of one point that we really did want to clarify. Um, and, and obviously there are difficulties that will arise from it, and, and it would be an expensive project. Um, this is something that we think the university will fund, uh, given that advancement has recently made a priority student mm -hmm. life. Um, also given the statement from the provost, we do know that it is a priority uh, to provide this space for students in the future. So we really wanted to say that um, we're very much so up to this challenge, and we recognize that it is definitely a challenge. We have support, as we've said, from many different parties on, on campus, um, and want to present this to the university and make it a priority in the future as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's not an easy project, um, and we think as your student government executive, it would be irresponsible for us to not challenge ourselves and to not challenge this university. Great. To add to that, yeah, if sure. I can? Yeah, of course. Um, I think that I'm really glad Tristan took the opportunity mm -hmm. to clarify um, the, the ideas about reopening the Physical Education Centre, but I would say that um, one of the greatest misconceptions about our platform is that that's the only thing in it. Um, mm. That's one point out of many. And our platform is about enhancing student life, um, addressing increasing quality of academics at Queen's, um, encouraging students to lead healthy, active lives and providing them resources to do that, and recognizing in ourselves as a potential future AMS executive, prior prioritizing student advocacy. And um, there's so many other things in our platform that I would say that's a, definitely a misconception. Um, we're really look, looking forward to a lot of really exciting initiatives, opening a salad bar at Common Ground, starting Q College, which would enable students to take extracurricular classes that could go on their co-curricular record, scheduled at times where we know that students don't want to take classes at 8 a.m. on a Saturday and don't want to sign up for an eight-week long class. So you could take you know, a cooking class for one afternoon. Um, there's so many other things that are in there working with the library to uh, conduct a space planning exercise to create more study space in libraries. And I think that I would say a misconception is that um, that those other issues haven't necessarily been highlighted, but we've gotten such positive feedback in our class talks, such positive energy from students at our booth who are really excited about all of those other ideas. I would say the Physical Education Center uh, platform point is a long-term vision, but we have so many other things in our platform that are very feasible and financially feasible mm -hmm. to complete in, in, one, in our one-year term. Um, why does your platform stand out amongst the other ones? Um, I think our platform stands out amongst other ones because, um, as Mira said, and as I said in, in my closing last night, it has both short-term goals and long-term goals. Um, as Mira said, the highlight has been on the very first platform point, which is a long-term goal. But e even some of the aspects of that, such as space for HCDS, is also recognized in our short-term goals. Um, there are things we can complete within one year. There are some things we can complete within the first month. With that said, we understand that in any other $16 million corporation or corporation of this side, the yearly turnover is never one year. Um, the, the executives of these other corporations make five-year plans, make 10-year plans, and are usually there for a long time to see these goals through. Um, with that said, we recognize we, if, we do, if we are successful, we would only be here for one year, but that doesn't mean we want to start and end at that one year. Mm -hmm. We want to set this up for future years. We want to set this up for the students that aren't going to be at Queen's, maybe even four or five years down the road. Um, what we can do now to set that up for the future is going to have a very heavy influence on the undergraduate experience at that time. And it doesn't matter to us that we won't be here. It doesn't matter to us that maybe even, you know, first years right now won't be here when this completed, as long as this gets realized eventually, because it would change the undergraduate experience. It would be very beneficial to students. Um, to us, this is not about a, a three-person legacy that we want to leave in one year. It has nothing to do about making waves and, and shocking people within one year and then leaving. Um, we, we understand the mandate of the AMS. We understand that it's always going to be here. We just want to set it up for future years. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we do have short-term goals as well that we would like to complete within that year. I think something to add to kind of what Doug said as well about our platform that makes it very strong is that we do have a lot of tangible initiatives as we've spoken of, and we've researched our entire platform mm -hmm. so clearly and spoken to all relevant parties for all of these initiatives to ensure that they are possible, um, both financially um, and in our term or past our term if they are a long-term goal. And that's something we worked very hard on for the past however many months we've been doing this. Like two months? <laughs> Three months. Three months? Yeah, a little while. Um, 
and we really did take the time to ensure that we could research every single platform point. So when this came up in a debate, we'd be very prepared um, to talk about our ideas. And we know that they are possible. And the, I think the one of the most important parts about our team and about our platform is that if we are elected, this is starting the day after we're elected. This isn't starting May 1st. We know that a lot of these initiatives do need to begin right now in order for them to be completed. Um, and we actually already have started some of them. So, so that's something we, we really wanted to differentiate uh, between our team and others as well, um, is that we've ensured that, that we've really put in a ton of work in this platform. And we want to give things that students would actually really appreciate and, and would really like. Mm -hmm. um, and that would draw people that aren't only involved in the AMS, but others that aren't at all as well. And I think just to add to that finally, um, it's really important that students know that they can and should expect more from their AMS executive. I think that it's, you know, it's possible maybe other platforms sort of were developed looking at what is it, what can a three-person executive do within the AMS and sort of looking internally at the AMS. But I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding of what the AMS is in the Queen's community. The AMS has a huge advocacy um, power and it takes a strong executive to enact that on behalf of students and to, to look at the AMS in terms of what can we feasibly do within one year. I think it, it's necessary to view your one-year term as a stepping stone towards a long-term vision. And that's the only way you can get over the annual turnover uh, challenges. And I think that in, in developing our platform, we, we've gotten so much positive energy from students who are really excited about, as we've said, our short-term and our long-term goals. Great. Um, what is the most valuable experience you've had at Queen's thus far that will enhance your position should you be elected? Individually? Do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Do you think you guys start? like to go first? Mira. Mira. Sure. You can start. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's smiling. Um, my, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. Um, what's <laughs> most the most valuable, valuable experience, experience? That you've had at Queen mm -hmm. so far that will enhance your position should you be elected? Yeah, I think most valuable experience. Okay. I think that um, my role currently is the Academic Affairs Commissioner for the AMS. Um, I work a lot with the administration. I am constantly talking to students, listening to their concerns, and then I was, as I said earlier, bringing those concerns to the administration. I also sit as a steering committee member on the Ontario Undergraduate Student Alliance. So I have experience um, doing advocacy and lobby work with MPPs at Queen's Park provincial government, um, understanding sort of the broader context of uh, post-secondary education in the province and seeing how Queen's fits in, into that. I think though, um, so I would definitely say my experience as Academic Affairs Commissioner, but I think going back to my experience before I worked for the AMS and having that experience of being really afraid of coming into the AMS offices. And I think that it's so important to hang on to that feeling and to remember that a lot of students do feel that way. If you don't know what that feels like, it's hard to address it. Um, I would say my greatest experience so far is my position this year as a, as a Senator for Arts and Science on the University Senate. Um, last year as ASSIS President I dealt primarily with students. Um, this year I have a great mix of both, I, um, faculty, administration and students. Um, in 1970 students pushed for student voice on the University Senate um, and, and we believe that if you're going to have that voice, you need to start using it. Um, in the past, if you look at University Senate, and I'm not criticizing the past, but the students would sit on one side, the faculty would sit on one side, and the administration would sit at the front. And it was basically these three parties that never really agreed on anything, and, it, and then the administration would just get their way. Um, so students really needed to start being more engaged, and as I mentioned last night as well, um, representation by participation. You're not really a representative until you, until you start using that voice. And that's something I really started pushing for with all of the other senators this year, the student senators, sorry. Um, don't sit in the block. Um, separate yourselves among the other faculty and get to know some of them. Because at the end of the day, these are people that are here for the students. They understand why Queen's University is so special, and they understand students are a big part of that. Um, so when motions are coming through University Senate that have to deal with the academics of you know, the university, they're prepared to partner with students. They're prepared to talk with students because at the end of the day, a lot of them vote the same way on these motions. Um, so if students are sitting one side and, and faculty are sitting on the other side, there's no real dialogue going back and forth. Um, and we set it up this year. I, I, I've encouraged a lot of the other student senators to get to know some of the faculty and talk to them before the University Senate happens. Talk to them after. Um, you need to have this dialogue beforehand because when you sit down at the University Senate, you have two hours and no discussion or no dialogue usually happens. Um, I would say that's beneficial um, to set me up should we be successful for president. Um, because of that experience, working with students and administration and faculty at the same time. It's very important that the president still keeps an eye on, on the student body and still keeps consulting them and engaged with them while still representing the society on, on a governing body level or on an administrative level. 
Cool. Um, Ahmad, I, f I feel like I talk about this every single day, but um, I, had my, I had a really great experience last year. Um, I was the head manager of Common Ground. So to kind of give you a bit of a background, I don't want to go for too long, but I could kind of go on for ages, I guess. Um, I, I started working at Common Ground in my first year. Um, I grabbed my application on my first day at Queen's, actually. Um, I applied and was hired as a staff and then a rehire the following year. Um, and then in my second year, uh, in March, I got hired as the head manager of Common Ground Coffee House. Um, so I think this has kind of been the most unique thing I've ever done. I was 19 years old. I was able to manage a million dollar business um, with, I know I've mentioned past, before in this interview, 125 staff and five other system manager portfolios as well. So I think kind of like to talk about what I did with that service and how that applies to VP Ops for the future as well. Um, I think one of the most important aspects of the VP Ops job is as a manager. Um, and, and I think there are two different aspects of management that I find very important that, that people have in these positions. Um, the first is that you're able to lead. Um, I think you have to be able to lead by example in order to lead um, a bunch of people that are the same age as you. So I mean, to, to draw on my experience last year, um, I was the youngest of all of my managers at Common Ground. Um, and something I knew I had to do was ensure that from the get-go, I was the leader of my team. Um, the only way I felt that I could do that was by showing that I was working the hardest, if not, well, the hardest of anyone on my team um, and ensuring that I set the precedent for how I, ever, how I wanted everyone to work. And I think you really have to do that kind of chain of authority of down and you really have to lead by example so that there's this trickle down effect. That's something that really applies for vice president of operations because you're doing that um, on a much grander scale. Um, so you're doing that down to your service directors and then down to your head managers, assistant managers and staff eventually as well. I mean, you technically are overseeing over 500 different employees of the AMS. I mean, indirectly of course, but sort of. Um, and the second part is, is humility. And I know I've mentioned this in debates as well. It's something that I feel, especially with all these jobs, given that there's a one-year turnaround, it's extremely important that you are willing to learn. And I know I keep drawing on this as well. Um, there would be no way for me to come into this position as Vice President of Operations and know everything about all of the 10 corporate services. I couldn't come in and say I know everything about QTV um, or everything about CFRC. Um, and I don't think it would be, it wouldn't be right um, or realistic to, to assume and try to do that either. Um, I think it's something that coming into these positions, you have to do your best to learn as much as you can all the time because you are supervising people. But you have to be able to recognize what somebody else knows more than you do and where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are and then be able to guide them in that sense. Um, so to draw on last year, uh, I came into Common Ground. Um, I was in a bit of disarray, I guess, a state of disarray. Um, Cogro had a deficit of $84,000 from the year before when mm -hmm. I started and it lost three managers that year um, out of the six and about 40 staff out of 115. Um, so the end of the year, there were like 65 staff, um, obviously not a management team really, including the head manager. Um, my team came in and there were all these problems. They had just moved into the Queen Center as well. Um, Kogoro, like I remember specifically like, being in interviews and Kogoro ran out of coffee one day completely and they had to shut down the service at like 3 p.m. Um, <laughs> instead of 1 a.m. because they had no coffee, which is despicable obviously. It's like, <laughs> Coffee house, it's ridiculous. So anyways, despicable. Cobra was like, despicable. Despicable. <laughs> Cobra was in a bad place. Um, and so my team came and we were like, let's restart this service. Let's think about this as year one. Mm -hmm. It was actually year 10 of the service being open. We're like, let's completely rebrand it, um, recreate the space, ensure that we bring the same life that Cobra had in the JDEC back into this space and apply that for the future. Um, so we came back in. I know I can go on and on for this forever. Um, to give you the basics, essentially, uh, last year we raised Cogro's revenue by two hundred thousand dollars. I think mean, you can see right now the space is it's obviously much more inviting than it was before, um, and we were able to de to decrease the deficit by sixty thousand dollars in one year. Um, this year, Common Ground will be making money. So I think to sum up, sorry, I know this is the the longest explanation ever. Uh, <laughs> I've had that experience and been able to turn one service around and I can see how that's very possible. So I have a very different perspective on how all these services operate um, and about specifically about what a deficit means, what surplus means, and, and where we can work from, from what spot sort of. Um, so I think my management experience is, is definitely will aid for sure um, in acting as Vice President of Operations if I've given the opportunity. Um, and it's something that's very necessary to have those skills, I'd say. Um, to do that job well, you need those skills. Um, and I, and I, sorry, I can go on. I'm going to go, okay, to last thing, off. I'm almost done, I promise. Um, <laughs> is that looking at a, at a budget now, I very much understand a very complex budget. Mm. Um, the budget of a corporate service at this society is much more complicated than that of a student government. 
um, when you look at uh, where revenue comes in and, and you're looking at a very different ballgame completely. Um, not having a student fee that funds your entire budget and knowing exactly what your revenue line item will look like, um, you have a lot more factors to, to play around with. I know that you guys would know that working for UTV. Um, obviously, you guys are doing fundraising, sponsorship, all that stuff, and there's no way to know exactly how much money you will have. So you've, it's a way more complex budget. I think that is very much so um, applicable to VP Ops because you're looking at a $16 million corporate budget, which is massive. I'll stop now. Sorry. <laughs> Long answer. Sorry. <laughs> Oopsies. Um, <laughs> all right. So mental health resources at Queen's has been an ongoing concern to students, especially in the past few years. Mm -hmm. What are your plans to address these concerns? Did you want to talk about that? I would love to. Um, <laughs> this is a really good question, and I was so glad that it was brought up at the debate last night so we had a chance to address it then. I think that we are really looking at this from two perspectives. Um, addressing mental health. So the first is looking at the peer support center. That's a service offered by the AMS, and it's a service I would argue the AMS can do that the university can't, in that it's a peer counseling service. And what we've heard from students as we've been consulting with students is that there's many reasons that a student would feel more comfortable going to a peer support center rather than a professional counselor. Um, there's also, you know, it's, it's open later, so students might have access to a peer support center before being able to get an appointment with appointment with HCDS, and so we really value at the Peer Support Center and all that it offers to the student body. It's also expanded tremendously in the last year or so, and so to help the PSC, as it's called, um, expand further, we would really want to look at the resources that are allocated to it, including uh, the time of the director, possibly increasing that to a full-time position, and also looking at the space and financial resources needed to run the center effectively to, to serve the increased, um, increased number of students that are using the center. However, we do think it's really important to recognize that there, there are many reasons that students may need more than peer counseling. They may need professional counseling. That's something that the university needs to do. And we've been speaking with health, health Counseling Disability Services. We met with Dr. Mike Condra before the break. We've spoken to him several times after the winter break um, as we've been forming our ideas about how can we, as a student government that has such a powerful voice on campus really help HCDS. The number one um, concern that Dr. Condra has said time and time again is that HCDS needs more space. It's not that they don't have the capacity to offer more counseling hours for students. They need more space to, to house those counselors. And so we've really, we wanted to take our platform a step further helping the Peer Support Center, but also recognizing that the AMS has an opportunity and I would say a responsibility at this point to use its power representing 14,000 students to take this as a serious concern to the administration. We have a short term and a long term goal for that. Short term, if we were elected February 2nd, to be honest, we'd start researching this, talking to the appropriate parties and looking at what um, immediate space resources could be allocated to HCDS. Long term, a much longer term, obviously. In our platform, we were really interested in um, reopening the Physical Education Center. And uh, when we when we told Dr. Condra that there might be an opportunity for HCDS to go in there, and would he be interested in that, his face lit up and sort of, he just kind of melted and was so appreciative and just said, thank you so much for putting that in your platform and for realizing and listening to, to what I've been saying time and time again. So those are our plans to address mental health. And we've, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from students who are really appreciative that we recognize that both aspects of counseling um, are help, help form a comprehensive plan to address mental health issues on campus. Great. Um, what has been the biggest challenge thus far during your campaigning? Waking up at 7. <laughs> Six, 6.30. 6.30. <laughs> Going it's to bed early. at 2. Early. It's so early. <laughs> and Who gets up at that time? Not even up no. That time. The house is so cold. So, and your Wait. house is freezing, specifically. I don't think that should be a real answer. No, that's not a real answer. Um, that's a fun answer. The biggest challenge. Um, challenge. Well, do you want from this campaign period alone or the entire process, sort of? Um, or either. I, either. Well, yeah, you can get both, both if you, you want. want. We can do whatever. Uh, let's start. What, what was we get that a What's your, what were you thinking? I, know, I can talk for like an hour. We know. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> good question. Um, well, let's do, I, I think we should do both. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's I'll, more fun. I'll do the biggest challenge ourselves. of the campaign. And I'll do, I can do the one for the process. Wait, what okay. can I do? Nothing. Hey, you guys. You just, you just talk. You can answer. Okay. Yeah. If you have something to add, let us know. Go you ahead. go first. Oh. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Um, I'm saying the biggest. <laughs> we good? 
We're yeah, good. no, we're, we're good. We like we're back. Good. Um, the biggest challenge by the entire time. <laughs> Jeez, we, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <continue. laughs> we said um, the biggest challenge of the campaign period, I guess. Um, so the campaign period is ten or eleven days long, 11. but there's a lot of stuff oh, leading up to it. So I think starting with picking up our nomination package to mm. now. Um, there's been a very intense process of consultation with students, and that extends yeah. back several months. Um, I think the the biggest balance, or so the biggest challenge we've had, is finding a balance between mm -hmm. who we're talking to them and what we're talking to them about. Um, at the beginning of our campaign, we talked to a lot of students, and we also talked to a lot of administration. Um, but we we struggled with a balance to find out a balance between students and administration to find out, because we had to talk to the administration about what's possible, but we had to talk to students to find out exactly what they wanted. Um, so we began to strike a balance slowly into the campaign, but once the campaign started and things got absolutely crazy and we're doing two class talks every half an hour and we're at the booth and we're in meetings, um, it's really hard to find a balance between talking to students mm -hmm. in class talks, talking at students um, at the booth, talking to students, and following up with the administration and other parties um, with platform points, with other questions that we've had, um, just to make sure that any questions that students ask us that we're unable to answer, we are able to go get the answer for them mm -hmm. and follow up with them. Um, so I think finding the balance between keeping in touch with students during the campaign while we're running from every corner of the campus um, and, and making sure that we're still, we're still consulting them and still addressing their concerns throughout the campaign. I think to go like broader, like for the entire mm -hmm. process, sort of. I think like one of the hardest things to do was come up with a team. I mean, like I know we had all decided separately that we wanted to run mm -hmm. for AMS executive, and, and there's this whole every year, this whole process of like who's gonna run with who, who's gonna do what, <laughs> and and um, I know I can like speak personally for myself from this experience. Uh, I was thinking about like all many different people, like who, what, whatever. It, it's so hard to come up with the right team. And I think mm -hmm. the most important aspects of your team need to be that you trust each other, mm -hmm. that you're not afraid to criticize each other, and that you know that the three of you are by far the best people for these jobs no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, you have to trust that in yourself as well as in your teammates. Um, so I know that like we had been talking for a while. I think the three of us like all signed up separately. We were like <laughs> discussing with each other for like a month probably at least. It was really mean. Mira really brought the team. Out. <laughs> okay, she wants to take credit for it. Anyway. No, you to cut her off, <laughs> um, Amira did kind of bring this team together. Thank you. We've been talking for. <laughs> she just wants credit for something. Uh, we've been talking for a while. And, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, we've been talking like on and off for a while, and trying to figure out. It. And, and I think it's. I'm really glad we went through that full process yeah. because learning about each other, mm -hmm. learning about our past experiences, and how they'd be applicable to these jobs um, has been the best thing that we could have done. Um, I knew going into this process, once we decided that three of us were going to run together, I was like, this is perfect. I know exactly that I'm running with the right people mm -hmm. and that I trust them um, as much as I trust myself to do this job well or these jobs well. Um, so that I think is, is, a, is a massive challenge in itself. Um, and I think you just kind of know when it fits. And I guess like, mm -hmm. that's a, a feeling that I think many people can, can what's the word I'm looking for? Relate to. Attest relate to. to. I was going to say a test. <laughs> uh, can, can relate to. Um, and on top of that, uh, once we had this team together, coming up with our platform and what we wanted to present to the student body this mm -hmm. coming year. What we wanted, we were, we were kind of all thinking about like, well, what are we gonna do? Like, how do you come up with an idea? Um, so we just started talking with different people about things and ideas just formed. We came up with this 46 page platform. There's way more information than 46 pages, um, in our brains at least, uh, and notepads. <laughs> but, you know, I just feel like, well, yeah, I mean, like, you can't, you can't like get it all out in 46 pages. No, it would be like can't. freaking 500 pages. Um, <laughs> I should just stop. <laughs> I should yeah, cut no, me no, off. Keep going, I'm gonna keep, keep going. going. Uh, and and so I think coming up with this document and coming up with what we wanted to present was mm -hmm. extremely difficult. I know to keep touch on themes that we've kind of addressed over and over again, we wanted to challenge ourselves more than we ever have before. And I'll mm -hmm. say I can speak for all of us 100%. This has been hands down the most challenging thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, this entire process, and I know that this job would be even more challenging than this is. Um, and we're very much so ready for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should you be elected, what will be the first thing that you do as a team in office? I know you touched on that briefly before, but if you have any other things. Mm -hmm. We were asked this before. What we did were we say? asked this. I remember what we said. Um, <laughs> we, well, no, we talked about how, so throughout this entire process, we've been consulting with students. Um, we had a lot of ideas and perspective on, on what kind of ideas we might want to include in our platform. But we also did you know, a whole bunch of consultation. We just had constant meetings with clubs and student groups. And anytime we had an opportunity to have a conversation with students, sort of finding out wh what's on your mind? What are you thinking about? What's concerning you? Is it the quality of your education? Mm -hmm. Is it um, facility space in the ARC? Is it the cost of your education? Um, 
Is it healthy food options on campus? So we, we took every opportunity we had to consult with students and the result is our platform. I would say if we're successful and if we're elected, it's necessary to extend that effort and do an even more concerted uh, consultation effort because we would no longer just be sort of representing, um, I don't know how I want to say this. It was so good for a while. <laughs> I was going to really good places with that. Great. <laughs> You said enough. I totally just lost my thought. Okay, no, I was gonna say, okay, no, guys, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm no, ready I to think, continue. Yeah, no, no. If we were elected, um, I think that the first thing we would want to do is consult with even more students. And it just sort of the time constraints of developing a platform, doing research about your position, um, and, and writing your platform, editing it, arranging everything else that's necessary for a campaign. We did not really prioritize consulting with students. But if we're elected, I think it's necessary to do that even more so leading up to, to taking office. I, I, mm. <laughs> you can go. I know I'm I being cut off. I think, <laughs> there. I think one of the <laughs> Let me speak. <laughs> Sorry, continue. I'll go after. Time I'll be really um, fast. I think one of the things that we also <laughs> want to emphasize is it's very hard to decide what we would do on day one because this process, as we said, is two and three months long, and the research process has already started. Um, if you look at a, a lot of the things in our platform, like a salad bar at Common Ground, Tristan has been researching that for months. Mm -hmm. um, a blue light app for campus, um, that's something we've also been researching. Other schools have it. In fact, I have University of Western Ontario's blue light app on my phone already. Um, so, so it's very hard what to say we would do on day one because this has been a long process and a lot of research has already gone into it. Um, with that said, we, we'd like to emphasize that that's the same for every single one of our platform points and not one more than the other. Um, we have been researching for months. It, it's very hard to see. I think just continue what we're doing on day one. Yeah. You say? I think like I know they're gonna cut me off. They don't want me to speak anymore. You have 30, 30 second rebuttal. <laughs> I'll go so quickly. Um, I think like the mentality that we're coming into these jobs with is that we are going on day one, and I'm actually yeah. so excited if we get elected to be able to start right away. Yep. And uh, this process has been so much fun as it is, but I'm so excited to. Hopefully, I want to keep being like, I'm so excited to start, but obviously we haven't been elected yet. I'm so excited to hopefully begin this job and start working right away. Mm -hmm. And we get to go straight into hiring, hire our team of people who we want to project our vision um, elsewhere as well. Uh, so I think no matter what we're doing on day one, um, we're starting right away. And everything's beginning then and our platform points are going to start flushing out at that point. So mm -hmm. we're ready to go. Great. That was okay. fast. Right? That was good. That was good. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> didn't have to cut you off. <laughs> um, so a few more questions. One issue with the current AMS Council is it's made up almost entirely of fifth and sixth year arts and science students. Mm -hmm. Will your team commit to hiring students from a variety of faculties and backgrounds? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I think yes. that it's actually yes. in AMS uh, hiring policy that if you have two candidates that are um, equally qualified and one is from another faculty, you can take that into consideration. I think it's really important um, to recognize that Having students from different faculties and from different years can bring um, a really unique perspective. Yeah. And um, I think that's something that we would really prioritize in terms of the fact that the AMS does represent undergraduate students um, from all faculties and, and schools. And so that's something that we would prioritize mm -hmm. in hiring as much as possible. I think it's first and foremost most important um, for the student body to hire the best candidate for the job. But um, in looking at that, definitely looking for a diversity of perspectives, not just from, from different faculties in different years, but that can mean many different things and something we would prioritize. Yeah, I think like um, like, like looking at past uh, councils as well, um, this is one of the first ones that is actually, like for the most part, com is it all fifth year? Composed of no, composed fourth of and, fourth and fifth, fourth and fifth years. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the past as well, there have been ones that I, at least like when I've been around uh, that have third years, uh, fourth years, and fifth years as well. I think it, it's like Mira said, having that different perspective on many issues is really, really important. Um, and yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that actually. You just wanted to talk. I just kind of said the exact same thing she did, but it's true. Can we want to make. That out? <laughs> <laughs> it's very that important. <laughs> It's important to have different ages and, and different faculties <laughs> represented in the society. Um, I am done. <laughs> I'm just going to so somebody kick me out. <laughs> Okay. They can use this. You can use that. <laughs> but it's editing techniques that we can use. Don't worry. Yeah, just cut me straight out. <laughs> Splice. All right. Many of the corporate services have hosted year-over-year -year deficits. What will your team do to curb losses from services that continue to underperform? Do you want me to answer this one, guys? Yes. Love you, too. Perfect. Very good question. Um, okay, so uh, I think something that's very important with all these services is that um, 
The def a deficit in one year is not the end of the world. I think we should be looking at the AMS corporate side as one business and then mm -hmm. each of the services as different departments within that business as well. So what we're looking for is a bottom line of zero um, for the entire corporate side of the AMS. Uh, having worked in a service that had a massive deficit um, and seeing that repaired, um, seeing that service is going to have a surplus this year, um, I can very well see that many problems are correctable um, within a short period of time as well. I, to be honest, I didn't expect the Common Ground would be making money within two years. I thought it would be more like five years. Um, but seeing the potential of a service to do that, and this is a very different environment than any other corporate world. Um, what's very unique about our AMS services is that uh, there's a one-year turnaround in all of our staff employees, obviously. But also this university has turnaround of students every year. You get different customers every single year. Um, and one thing that I noticed is that changes you make to a service uh, won't be um, remembered after a certain amount of time because you have the flow of students in and out of Queens all the time. To speak on deficits that have lasted for a while, it's something that we definitely need to address. I think that every year executives always say that they're going to address um, the deficit of a service that's had one for five years. Uh, and I don't know, I mean like, you actually have to do something about it. I don't, we can't have a service running a $30,000 deficit seven years in a row. And that's just not responsible to the student body mm -hmm. and obviously not sustainable. I'm not saying that you need to cut out that service at all. And I don't think that really should be ever the right approach to one. Um, I know to speak on another experience, uh, I think it was 10 years ago, um, the Queen's Pub and Alfie's that we know now uh, were not at all what they are at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Alfie's was going to be shut down. Um, and the executive had committed to shutting it down before they hired John McDermott, um, who is the retail operations officer now. And within two, I think it was two years, um, he turned that place around completely. I don't know exact numbers. I believe it had, it had for sure over a hundred thousand dollar deficit from one year. Um, and Alfie's was making money three years later. So again, to draw on those two experiences, it's not to say it's easy. It's very much so possible though. And I don't think closing a service is the smartest way to go about this at all. So to speak on a couple, I know that for example, CFRC has run a deficit for the past number of years. That's something that coming in as vice president of operations, I'd want to address um, with the service uh, for this coming year as well and come up with a plan and ensure that we have something prepared for the following year. So we have some way to combat this deficit and ensure that it won't happen again, especially with services like that. Um, CFRC has a mandatory student fee um, for the student body and that really makes us responsible for ensuring that that service does not lose money um, because that is students funding it. Um, but to touch on what I was talking about at the beginning again, uh, surplus and deficit I don't think are necessarily the most important aspects of these uh, corporate services. They all offer something different to the student body. It's very important to recognize the actual service that they provide um, before the financial aspects. Another thing to look at is that when a service is running a deficit, um, maybe look at uh, the wages that they're providing to many of the student bodies. Well, you look at one, for example, Wacom. Wacom's, um, the majority of Wacom's budget goes directly to wages. So that's money that we take in that we're literally putting directly back in student pockets afterwards as well. Um, so yes, you do have to look critically, uh, but this is a very different organization than any other business and that's important to recognize as well. Um, as for how I would combat this, I'll repeat again. Um, I think it's important to address all of these services and I really want to look down at each of them um, and figure out some kind of long-term strategic plan. And that's something I'd want to work with board of directors on um, for the next three years at least. Um, so two more questions. Yeah. <laughs> so all three of you have been a part of the AMS, and in the journal you've been quoted as saying that others are perceiving you as an insider team. How are you addressing that? I would say, <laughs> firstly, that my hand made a really weird sound there. Um, I would say, firstly, I think I... Let's start again. It doesn't work that way. Cut. They're running the camera the entire no, time. Take two. It. Okay, I don't I'm want ready. them to cut it. This is so much more fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, stop, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's focus. Um, that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Out of this team, I actually have never worked full time for the AMS mm -hmm. before. Um, the position I have now is not even in the AMS policy. The Student Senate Caucus Chair is the one that I hold that has any affiliation with the AMS. Um, so that's me personally. Um, however, we are quoted in the journal as saying that. And I think it's really important. An insider perspective is really important and can be beneficial, but so can an outsider perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and we really stress our experience and passion throughout this election. Um, however, throughout this campaign, we've also started stepping outside of our comfort zones, out of the AMS offices or out of Walk Home or Common Ground. And, and we really try to touch base with students that aren't necessarily part of the AMS or may not even know what the AMS does. Um, a lot of students, they can work here, they can work full time here, or maybe they just sign up for the health and dental plan. 
but the AMS has a heavy influence in all aspects of the Queen's community. And, and once students start to realize that, then they start telling us their opinions, they start criticizing, they start giving us their input. Um, but it's really important for us to step out of these offices, to step out of the JDUC and go to every corner of campus, every age of student and every faculty society or every faculty, sorry, um, and, and engage them. Um, because often students don't come to the JDUC. The office, students, there are a certain number of students that don't believe that the AMS is the center of the Queen's campus, which is fair. And we totally understand that. With that said, we would make an effort to engage them. And, and if they don't want to be part of the AMS, that's fine. But there is something here for everybody. Um, but. But in terms of an insider experience, we, we do have a lot of experience working for the AMS, but we recognize that, and we recognize the importance of stepping out of these office, offices and going to every corner of the campus and engaging every different type of student. I think the other thing I'd like to add to that, is, and we keep talking about um, consulting and collaborating with different, with different people on different initiatives that we have, uh, and we all bring, although we've, well, Mir and I have both worked for the AMS full-time, mm -hmm. Doug hasn't, um, we bring different perspectives on everything mm -hmm. from internally. Um, one thing that we may not have is the external perspective, and that's something we'd want to consult people on mm -hmm. and recognize that that is something that, that our team's at fault for in some ways. Um, having said that, these jobs are massive, and the job of the executive as well, um, specifically, sorry, the job of the executive specifically um, are astronomical. They're, they're way bigger than anything else that, that any of us has ever done before, and I think our experience is going to be very, very valuable um, in those positions as well. Uh, the AMS does have a mandate of no experience necessary, of course, and that's something that I think is extremely important to, to maintain, because um, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that you need to go through this chain of like intern, something, commissioner, something, executive sort of thing. But without, <laughs> uh, um, God, what am I doing? Cut that uh, you cut out that little slip. Um, yeah, it, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be experience necessary, but I'd say the experience definitely helps, um, especially with these three jobs. It, it, it will be extremely helpful um, in completing these roles well. And I would add, if I may, one of the misconceptions of, as the journal has quoted, being an insider team or working for the AMS for uh, being a permanent staff for any number of years, is that, we, is that this team would come in and do the same thing that the executive has done the year before. Mm -hmm. But if you read our platform and we talk about our philosophy and you see us in debates, we are by no means the status quo. I mean, we, we would really hope to shake things up a little bit, try something new, salad bar, blue light app. These are things that they may have been talked about in the past, but they haven't been acted upon. Uh, um, and we would by no means just step in and fill the shoes that are already here. Um, we, we would want to go further. We want to push the mm -hmm. boundaries, try new things, offer more services to students. As we keep mentioning, students should expect more from the AMS and the AMS should be doing more for students. Um, so as I said, one of the misconceptions is we would just fill the shoes that are already here, but we want to push the boundaries. We want to try new things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to say something? You can add something for sure. You can't add something. <laughs> Why not? I'm kidding. Don't. I'm joking. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, oh. I would just Speed say round. very quickly, <laughs> speed round, okay. Um, I would say what I was thinking when Tristan and Doug were speaking is that I do think that we're a very knowledgeable team, but I would argue that we do have an understanding of the so-called external perspective. I brought this up earlier. I, I, when I picked up my council application one year ago, I was literally terrified to walk into the AMS offices. So yes, I have a year almost of experience working for the AMS, but I've constantly tried to hold on to that feeling. And I think that's something that I really do bring to this team is holding on to that and remembering that. So yes, we are a knowledgeable team, but I do think that we have an understanding and a sense of, of what the so-called external perspective is. Okay, great. Last question. Um, given that your team was widely considered to be the favorites coming into this race, how would you say your teams performed over the course of the campaign? Oh, Were we? Very well, that's so nice. <laughs> Good to know. I think, um, mm, that's so nice. I think, uh, <laughs> whoever wrote that. As, Modestly as I can say this, I think we did recognize that we were a very strong team. We talked about mm -hmm. our yeah. passion and experience. Yeah. Um, but as we mentioned before, we're consistently challenging each other mm -hmm. every second of every day to run faster to the next class talk, to get two class talks done here and talk to three students on the way. We're consistently challenging each mm -hmm. other because even if students do perceive us as as the favorite, as you mentioned, or the team that would be best to run the AMS executive, we have to win the election first. Mm -hmm. um, campaign is the first step. The election is the first step. So we consistently challenge each other minute by minute, day by day, night by night, um, because this is the first step. This is the first step of what we hope to be a long process mm -hmm. or, or a long year working for the AMS. Um, but if we don't challenge ourselves now and we don't put 110% in now, then it would just be a waste of time.
I think, um, sorry, ooh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> one thing to add to that as well is that we wouldn't have done this if we didn't think we were the best team for it. Um, and we wouldn't have gone into this process if we didn't think that we could do the best possible job for the student body. Because it is the responsibility of an elected official um, to fulfill that role. Um, and so I think that's something that's very important with the three of us, is that when we came together, we were positive that we would be um, and could be the best team for these positions. And that's why we think we've come up with the best platform. Um, having said that, I know we're saying that, but like Doug said, we're always going to keep pushing ourselves no matter what. And we're never going to assume we're winning this election. Um, and I think in terms of thinking yeah. about, about what you have, we talked about the process that you, that you go through in terms of thinking about whether you're going to run. And it really comes down to not what you're going to get out of it, but what you can bring to it. And that's what we really mean when we say that we think that we have the most to offer, is that through our experiences, both in and out of the AMS, we really do feel that we have the most perspective and the most knowledge to offer to, to stand up for students and to make a difference on this campus. That's what we mean when we say that we think that, that we could fulfill these positions best. And in in terms of going that process through that process and deciding if you're going to run, I know that we each felt very, it's a responsibility. If you're putting yourself forth as an option to the student body, you need to be confident that you have something to offer. And uh, we went through that process and here we are today. I would, I would say in response to your question that we don't really think in terms of being a favorite team or mm -hmm. how have we done so far. You just, you can't have that mindset until the, or mind frame until the election is over. So constantly we're thinking, how do we how do we get better? How do we challenge ourselves more and more each day? Yeah. Oh, I thought of one other thing and I just forgot it. Oh yeah, sorry. Eugene okay, gonna I'm going to go you. really fast. It's going to be like 30 <laughs> seconds so fast. We're running out, you know. Um, one thing that we've learned from this session, though, I think we've learned things from the other teams running as well. Yes. And, and although yes. we recognize what we can do well, um, there's a ton to learn from other mm -hmm. people. And it's very important to be able to take what the other teams have done and see mm -hmm. the, the benefit in that. And there's been a ton for both the other teams. Yeah. And I, we, I know we all have a lot of respect for the other teams running as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've definitely learned a lot um, from them uh, from them in this process. We really do encourage people to go through all three platforms, not just ours, um, before voting. Because you have to make an informed decision as to who you think would be best for these jobs, not who we think. So, yeah. Okay, great. I don't know if we have... We have time for any other Okay, if you have any other comments or anything else you'd like to say. Sorry, I talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a weird, nervous laugh. <laughs> um, is there anything we'd like to close? Yeah, you're thinking about something. I guess I would just so. say that... <laughs> Doug. I guess I would just say that um, this whole process, we were, we were talking about this yesterday and talking about it as a team, is that I don't know what I expected coming into this, but it has been so much more fun than I thought it would be. I sort of pictured being stressed out constantly, but what you're doing is you're talking about how much how much you care about the Queen's community and how much we as a team have um, have thought about care, thought carefully about where we'd want the AMS to go. And that's what you do all day, every day. Yes, you get up at 7 and you go to bed at 2, but that means all day you get to talk to students about our, you know, our vision that we've developed for, for the Queen's community. That vision developed in consultation with other students. So it's been a really fun process and um, it's been sweet. It's would, been awesome. Yeah. It's been a slice. <laughs> I might add, even on the last question, um, Never lose sight of the goal and never lose sight of who's in charge. And we are by no means in charge. Whether or not, as you mentioned, we are perceived as the favorite, we are not in charge at all. I've Our campaign manager is not before. in charge. It's the students that are in charge. And we, we need to make sure that even now, we're running across campus, it's very chaotic, it's very hectic. We need to make sure that every single student has the chance to talk to us if they, mm -hmm. if they want to, and that we take their opinion into consideration as equally weighted amongst all the students. Um, just because we're, the, we're running for executive doesn't mean our opinion is more important than anybody else's, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that should we be successful that we would carry into our, our year here. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank time. you so much. Thank you.